my friends, how are you? And welcome to today's video where we are going to be talking about living on a thousand dollars a month. And I'm going to tell you this story to give an example of what you can do with your money if you cut your expenses drastically low. And I'm not saying you have to be as extreme as we were. Perhaps you make more money. Perhaps your goals aren't quite the same. A lot of the things that Dave and I did way back in 2005 are very similar to what the people in the FIRE movement are doing. FIRE movement, if you are not aware, stands for financial independence, retire early. So you're not chained to a job maybe that you don't like and you're forced to work until you're 65. And one of the biggest ideas is save as much as possible and cut your expenses to nothing. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you how. Dave and I lived on $1,000 a month for almost a year and a half in order to buy our first house. When Dave graduated college in 2005 and got his first teaching job, he taught high school Spanish in a small town in the state of Idaho. Back then, the starting salary for teachers in the state of Idaho was $27,000. Yeah, that's not very much for something that requires a four-year degree and a certification. And actually, the state of Idaho has been one of the lowest paying states in the United States for starting teachers. I think they raised it to $35,000 dollars only four or five years ago and actually today the day i am filming this the governor in the state of idaho has pushed to raise the salary of a starting teacher up to forty thousand dollars per year uh, by the end of 2021 now what does that mean as far as take home i am happy to tell you you have taxes that you have to take out social security taxes medicare taxes most teachers are required to put in a percentage into a retirement system when the salary was twenty seven thousand dollars a year Dave also coached three sports that year and he did get a small stipend for each one. It was not very much for the amount of time. So broken down hourly, it's not that much. So if you include the three stipends, our take home pay every single month was $2,112. Now, after being a college student, this felt like an enormous raise. So what we wanted to do was save for a house ASAP. We wanted to buy a house, we knew we were only going to be in Idaho for about a year as he was filling a contract for a lady that decided to take a year's worth of maternity leave and the job would no longer be there after that one year. So we moved up to Salmon, Idaho. It's a town of like 3,000 people tucked in the mountains, one tiny grocery store. I think they had a library and a post office. Amazon, they still almost only did books. And this was back when Netflix was still mail in the DVD. Streaming was not a thing. People did not have internet in their houses. It was a totally different world back there. We were very isolated. So this is how our $1,000 a month spend broke down so we could save the other $1,112 every single month in order to get around a $20,000 down payment. Number one is our rent was $450 and for the extra $20 a month I chose to add on, we also got unlimited cable. So $470 a month was our rent. We did have cell phones. If I'm remembering correctly, they were expensive because they were with Verizon, which was basically the only company that covered such a small, far away area was about $90 a month. Dave also was required to start paying back his student loans because you have to start paying those back six months after you graduate. Those were $90 a month as well. Hey, we have spent $650 so far, which means we only have $350 to go and we haven't done very much yet. So the next thing on the list, electricity for our apartment, that was extra. It was electric everything. It was a two bedroom apartment, if I remember right. Electricity was about $50 a month. Next up, you have gas and insurance for your cars. We did have two cars at the time. Neither was particularly new and exciting. However, because we lived in such a small area, our apartment was about a half a mile from the high school where Dave taught. Dave literally walked to school every single day in the dead of winter. And he had these like ear warmer things, but he, he walked to school every single day. And I only allowed myself to go out in my car about once a week. I lived across a field from the grocery store. So I would put Haley in my stroller walk her across the field, do my grocery shopping in the stroller, put the food down in the basket and then push the grocery, <laughs> push the groceries back home to my apartment in the stroller. So we didn't drive ever, which was kind of a good thing because this was right around post Katrina 
and gas prices were high. They were about $4 a gallon at the time. So we couldn't afford to fill up the cars more than maybe once a month at about $100 to fill up his little Cavalier and my Grand Marquis. Now I haven't mentioned food yet. We haven't eaten anything yet. So let's talk about that. I did my best to keep my grocery budget at $100 a month. That is $25 a week for a family of three with one tiny little grocery store that was overpriced, no coupons and no discounts and barely any sale items or anything. And I was able to do it. However, I had to make weird cuts sometimes. I'd walk around the store with my little calculator like this, punching in the numbers. If I would get the dish soap that I needed that week and it pushed me over my $25, I would have to put it back and get a cheaper brand. I remember one week I wanted to buy a new chapstick they're a dollar. I was at my $25 and I couldn't buy the chapstick that week. If I wanted to eat chicken from a recipe and it pushed me over, I had to put back the expensive chicken breast and figure out a different, cheaper meal. I made everything from scratch, bread, soups, granola, anything that I could make on my own, I did. And I don't, I almost don't even remember what we eight back then, but it couldn't have been expensive. I did have a few cookbooks that I worked with. Everything was cooked from scratch. We never had snacks. We never had drinks. We drank water and I got milk for Haley because she was about one at the time, but that is it. So that leaves me with only a hundred dollars left for everything else. Number one was health insurance for myself and Haley because to put me and Haley on Dave's work health insurance at the time was going to take our health insurance from like $250 a month withdrawal up to 600. So I went through Blue, Blue Cross Blue Shield and got health insurance for me. And because we made so little, Haley did qualify for the state, I think it's called CHIP for $5 a month. So between my health insurance and Haley's health insurance, that was another $70 a month, which leaves us with a grand total of $30 left to spend on whatever else you need in your budget that I have not mentioned yet. Going out to eat, a movie here and there, all of those things. Um, and the truth is we didn't do any of them. When it comes to cutting your expenses to live like that, yeah, it was really, really tight, really tight. But we didn't do it forever. We did it for a year and a little bit order to get the down payment for the house. Well, we did it for a little bit longer because after we bought the house, we paid off the student loans. So we still lived like that for a few years after, but it's possible. Did not go out to eat. We did not go to the movies. In fact, I don't know that we had a movie theater. Like the closest movie theater, I think was two and a half hours away. The closest Walmart was two and a half hours away. There was literally nothing to do unless you liked to salmon fish or go trail running. So I learned to do a little bit of trail running back in the day, got lost a few times. <laughs> and I know you're calculating this out and you're thinking, well, a school year is like what, August to May, that's not long enough to save up $20,000 for a down payment for a house. And you're right. And that's because uh, for the summer before and the summer after Dave taught at that place, we actually lived and worked at a Boy Scout camp, like a summer camp. The summer before we moved up to Salmon, we worked at this camp right outside of Yellowstone National Park. Dave was the high adventure director. I was the aquatic director. Room and board is taken care of. They paid us on top of that, not a lot, but enough to where we didn't need to spend almost any of it except for gas for our cars. And we put all of it in savings. So I know that's kind of a unique example. Most people are not gonna go live and work at a youth camp of sorts, but it is an option and probably one that most people don't think about. What's the moral of the story? Basically that you can save up for big purchases when you don't make very much, but it takes planning, discipline, and understanding that you're just not gonna do anything for this period of time while you save up for your bigger goal. And that's okay. I think it teaches you a lot about needs and wants. And for the people that are interested in the FIRE movement, this is basically what they do. They cut their expenses to nothing so they can retire from whatever job that they feel like they have to do and then do whatever else they want. And some people's spending is gonna look different depending on where you live. Like you're not gonna live off of that budget in California most likely, but wherever it is that you live, I am sure there is some way that you can cut back on your expenses and put more into savings for whatever your larger long-term goals are. I would like to know down below for 2021, what are your 
larger, longer term savings goals? Is it a house down payment? Is it a home remodel, a car, a family move, retiring early? Is it a boat? Whatever it is, let me know down below. I would love to hear it. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next video.